Hello? Hello! I am back today with another nail tutorial. It's been a while since I've shown you how I remove my gel nails. So in this video, I'm going to be removing the jelly tips that I had on in my last tutorial. And while I'm doing the removal, I'm gonna be answering basically anything that I see asked quite a bit under the jelly tips videos. I just figured this would be a good format to answer all of the questions that I get on those videos. And it's a good way for you to see those answers to those questions. So as always, if you guys are new to my channel, I am not a professional nail tech. I am not a professional nail anything. I'm just a gal at home trying to save a couple bucks. Everything that I have learned has been through trial and error and using myself as a guinea pig. I'm not a pro, nor am I claiming to be. With all of that being said, as always, everything that I use will be listed in the description box below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed. And let's get into it. So here are my nails after multiple weeks of wear and tear. I've had the nails on my left hand on for about three weeks at this point and my right hand is at the three and a half week mark because I did it a few days before filming my left hand. Everything is looking pretty good, no signs of lifting or cracks. I could probably just do another fill and continue on for another three weeks but I did want a different look and shape so I decided to do a removal and start fresh. When I have longer nail extensions I take down the length with these toenail clippers but because I'm working with a shorter almond shape I'll be using my regular nail clippers to trim them down before I do the filing. And while I do this, I'll answer probably one of the most commonly asked questions across all of my nail videos, which is how long does this process take you when referring to the application process? So I have two answers for this. When I'm not filming and I'm just doing my nails for pleasure, if I'm just doing a basic gel manicure, it takes me about an hour per hand, including cuticle cleanup and prep. If I'm doing any form of nail extension, it takes me about an hour and a half per hand. When I'm filming, however, it takes anywhere from like four to six hours because I have to constantly stop to review my footage to make sure that what I'm doing is in frame and in focus. Sometimes I will be completely out of frame during a key step, so I'll have no choice but to redo it. I've been in situations where I've forgotten to make sure that I'm in focus or in frame and completely scrapped an entire video because a key step was missing and I moved on before double checking. But yeah, jelly tips usually take me around an hour and a half per hand. I'm just cleaning up my workstation with my mini crumb vacuum and selecting a bit to file down the gel on my nails. You can of course use a hand file to do this, it'll just take you a bit longer. I'll be using my Kiara Sky large barrel fine bit and my e-file to remove my gel polish as well as the top layer of what's left of my jelly tips. And as always, I'm doing this above my dust collector. You can file off as much as you're comfortable with before soaking. The key is to avoid contact with the natural nail. You definitely don't want to feel a burning sensation when you're filing the tops of your nails. With practice I've gotten pretty good at filing almost down to my natural nail with no damage and then just soaking off whatever little bits are left. So while I do this I'll move on to the next question which is how long does it take you to do your opposite hand? And I'm guessing this is referring to how long it takes me to do a manicure using my non-dominant hand. I've gotten better at doing my opposite hand but it does take me a long ass time depending on what I'm doing. I'd say about an hour and a half, sometimes an hour and 45 minutes. In my experience, the key to using your non-dominant hand is to place something underneath your forearm or your wrist to stabilize it as you work. I also try to elevate my hands like a little bit closer to my face when I'm working so I can see exactly what it is that I'm doing. I could probably do an entire video on this topic, but it does take me a very long time still. I've actually started using my left hand to do random things throughout the day to improve my dexterity because my goal is to eventually become ambidextrous.
When I'm done filing off the gel, I just brush the excess dust off my nails and clean up the shape a little bit with my hand file before moving onto my right hand. Another recurring question I get on my jelly tips videos, well, all of my nail videos actually, is how long do these last? When I do any manicure, my goal is about three weeks. My jelly tips usually last me three weeks unless I get bored before then and remove them. And a follow-up to that question is how do you get them to last more than a week? And my answer is that prep is everything. Prep takes me a while to do and it's probably hella boring for you to watch me do it in every video, but it is super important if you want a long-lasting manicure. If you're struggling making your tips last longer than a week, I would ask, are you cleaning off all of the excess oil off of your nail plates before starting? Are you using a dehydrator? Are you using an acid-free primer? Are you cleaning the cuticle area either by pushing back the cuticles or trimming to prevent lifting? And if you answer yes to all of the above, there may be a couple other reasons why your nails are popping off. Before applying your prep products, are you roughing up the surface of your natural nails with a gentle nail file or are you using a buffing block? A buffing block may make the surface of your nails too smooth and sometimes if the surface of your nails is too smooth, whatever you put on top of them, whether it be gel polish, jelly tips, will have a hard time adhering and will have a higher chance of popping off. Even if you've used all of the correct prep products, if you're nail is too smooth, whatever you put on top of it is going to have a really hard time adhering. This actually happened to me a couple times when I first started doing nail extensions years ago. A couple more common mistakes are one, not choosing the correct tip size and sizing down, and two, placing your jelly tips too close to the cuticle area and having excess builder gel ooze out at the cuticle. If that happens, lifting at the cuticle area is inevitable, which brings me to the next question, which is how do I prevent lifting around on the cuticle area. You want to make sure that you apply a very thin layer of the builder gel at the cuticle of the jelly tip and make sure to leave a little space between your real cuticle and the jelly tip cuticle, if that makes sense. Applying it right on your cuticle or allowing the gel to ooze out and make contact with your skin will cause lifting once your natural nail starts to grow out. I go over all of this in pretty much all of my jelly tips videos, so it might sound redundant, but it is a recurring question. Alrighty, moving on to the soaking process. I'm just saturating some cotton balls in pure acetone, placing them on my nails and securing them in place with my nail clips. Because I have so little leftover gel on my nails, I don't need the aluminum foil today, the clips will do the job. After soaking my nails for about 10 minutes, I remove the nail clips one by one, scrape away the softened gel with my cuticle pusher tool, and lightly buff the surface of my nails to get any little bits that I may have missed. So on to the next question, which is how many fills can you do on the jelly tips before you have to start over? I could probably get away with like three or four fills before I feel the need to start over, but I get bored after my second fill and I want to move on to something fresh, so I never really make it to the third or fourth fill, but I know that I could if I really wanted to.
So now that all the gel is off, I'm just trimming my natural nails a little bit and I'm wiping off the excess dust with alcohol on a lint-free wipe and then I'm moving on to cleaning up my cuticles. I'm applying my Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover to soften the skin around my nails and then I'm gently pushing back my cuticles and removing the dead skin with my cuticle pusher tool. I'm wiping away the mush with a little bit of alcohol on a lint-free wipe and then I'm moving on to my right hand. By the way, I don't know if I already said this, but I'll have a longer nail tutorial up soon. I just, I needed a break from the nail extensions for a bit. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love having my nails done, but there is no better feeling than deep cleaning, decluttering, and organizing with short, natural nails. Now I'm just gently trimming away all of that white hangy dead skin around my nails with my cuticle nippers. I always show myself doing this on my left hand. I move pretty slowly when using my non-dominant hand and just do very small little snips to avoid catching my live skin. Alrighty, time to baste my cuticles and my nail plates with my cuticle oil. Whether I have nail extensions or not, I am always reapplying cuticle oil throughout the day. I think I have a cuticle oil pen in every room of this house. Lastly, I'm applying my honey lemon salve to my cuticles, my nails, my fingers, the backs of my hands. They're all getting basted like a Thanksgiving turkey today. So that is how I remove my jelly tips without damaging my natural nails. I hope that you guys found it helpful. As always, everything that I used will be listed in the description box below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed. And I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you, bye.